So uh, today I would like to present uh, Lua VC, which is a bundles for a C++ web toolkit library. And uh, let's start with the uh, talk structure itself. So uh, there are three main parts. Uh, at first part, I would like to talk about VC itself. So about its key features and uh, uh, what's new in VC for web development in Lua. So uh, it's uh, like a motivation part. Uh, why do we actually need to bind it to Lua? Uh, in the next section, I'll talk a bit about uh, Lua VC, its current state. Uh, we'll go through some examples and uh, maybe some uh, implementation details. And finally, I would like to talk about the future. So about the further development and maybe some instructions how to contribute and uh, what are the main goals. So now let's uh, uh, jump to the first part. It's about uh, VC, a C++ web toolkit library. Uh, so it's a, a C++, C++ framework uh, for developing web applications and sites. And uh, it provides a widget-centric application programming interface so uh, think of widget as an abstraction uh, visual element of user interface, which actually helps us to abstract from technologies such as HTML or CSS. Uh, also, uh, VT uh, supports, uh, it's really similar to Qt in some cases, well-known and widely used library, I think, uh, for graphical user interface development. And uh, for example, it provides a similar approach to event handling and uh, in other things. And actually the code in VC looks similar to the code as, a, as if code of graphical user interface application, not a typical uh, web application. So also uh, it provides a really high performance. So it's good for energy saving or space saving systems. And uh, uh, for sure, it supports all the major browsers like uh, uh, Firefox, Chrome, and others, uh, but at the same time, plain HTML browsers, and which is important, uh, web crawlers, because uh, it uh, uh, provides equal behavior with support of JavaScript and without support of JavaScript. It provides equal uh, plain HTML version, which is useful for internet bots and web crawlers. Okay, so and there is just a demonstration. It's from the list of official VT examples. Uh, it's a well-known game, I think, uh, and uh, uh, it demonstrates the power of uh, widget usage and of uh, input-output in VT. So uh, now let's move to the next part. It's about uh, current state of Lua VT. Uh, well, uh, I would say it's, uh, the, first, uh, the current state is the first release. So uh, it's not, uh, I would say it's ready for a limited practical usage. So uh, regarding to numbers, uh, there are uh, about 70 widgets are ready for usage and uh, near 2000 methods are uh, bound to Lua. And about uh, VT versions, because VT for sure has a, a very good progress and development, so there are some changes. So there is an issue of compatibility with a wider range of VT versions. And for this, uh, I would say it supports versions from 3.3.0 and greater. And uh, later I'll tell how it's implemented. Okay, so now let's talk a bit about the installation. Uh, nothing special there, just two main ways. There is an installation using Lua Rocks, so just Lua Rocks install Lua VT. Or there is a manual installation uh, which, is, which can be done use, uh, by cloning the repo from the GitHub and then just build it using Lua Rocks make. So uh, for sure it depends on VT, so you need to install VT. There are instructions in the official uh, web toolkit site, which is uh, webtoolkit.io. Web uh, the link uh, will be later. And for sure it depends on Lua, uh, with version 5.1 and greater. Uh, okay, so now a bit about the usage. Uh, uh, there is a simple example of usage. Uh, we just, uh, uh, there is a logical 
code, the uh, logical code of a web application, which is called in the construction of your application, and we pass it to a server in the form of string. So uh, it's not so important part, but uh, you can see some interesting uh, stuff inside the logical code, which is in the form of string. Uh, for example, we create a widget there, and we set up a signal handler, and let's uh, uh, look at these parts in more details. So widgets. Widgets, uh, which has uh, uh, visual, uh, visual elements of uh, user interface, uh, provides abstraction of HTML and CSS. So it's a very simple example. We just create uh, Lua objects, uh, and uh, each widget is represented to Lua as a meta table, so nothing special there. Uh, and uh, about even handling, uh, it provides a classical signal slot uh, mechanism. So uh, we could just, in this example, we have a, a signal called clicked, uh, and we could simply connect it to a slot function, which is a lambda function in our case. So we just pass it as an arguments, and uh, we make sure that it will be called uh, every time the signal is emitted. So the usage is very simple and flexible. For sure, there are some style issues because uh, the, uh, uh, the widget gallery is uh, huge, but uh, there are always some specific uh, situations when you need to use something more like a CSS and HTML for development. Uh, so it provides a really simple interface. So we can just uh, set up a, a CSS or file and then just use a style classes from there, like this. Uh, OK. Uh, there is a huge example. It's not so important to look at carefully. So it just uses concepts I already told about. Uh, so we create widgets. We set up a Lua uh, signal handler. Actually, it's a web interface for a Lua check. And uh, it's very simple, so it looks like this, OK? And also, there are some more examples, which is not so important. OK, and uh, there is an issue about testing, because for sure, for a good testing, you need to support a browser or a browser simulation. And uh, uh, VT itself provides a module called Lua uh, called VTest environment, which is used to create an application without actually a browser or a browser simulation. So uh, we could do it simply like this. Uh, we create an application, and then we just uh, use it as a normal application. So it's uh, very useful for testing. OK, and a bit about implementation. So. Uh, we used uh, plain, uh, plain Lua C uh, application programming interface, uh, nothing special like uh, Lua bind or Swig, just uh, plain Lua CAP. Uh, and we uh, have a number of solutions actually, uh, which are used to simplify internal development of Lua VT. Uh, actually, we have a script called automainbindings.py. Uh, don't be scared about this uh, contraction. It has nothing in common with A-B tests. It's just from uh, automainbindings.py. Actually, it's a uh, uh, Python script, uh, which has a lot of functions. It uses a, a technology called GCC XML, which is a parser for a C++ code. So it takes and put a VT headers, in our case, and it produces bindings for them. So it's uh, just a specific code generator, which is used actually to generate most of the code. Uh, and uh, we have another tool, which is uh, again docs.lua. Uh, uh, we use it to generate uh, documentation. And uh, well, it's, it's not actually a documentation because uh, now it's just a list of uh, VT classes bound to Lua. Uh, and uh, methods, and also it provides a links to original VT documentation, but uh, it's not a good, it's not uh, really a good documentation. So, and uh, yeah, 
compatibility with different VT versions. Uh, as I already said, uh, it provides uh, compatibility with version of 3.3.0 and greater. And uh, we just uh, generate a list of members for the earliest version, which is in our case uh, 3.3.0, and for the latest, which is uh, 3.3.6. And then we generate a blacklist from these two lists of methods. Uh, and uh, then we pass it to our script in order to just do not bind methods which uh, were changed since last six versions. And for sure, uh, now let's talk a bit about the further development. So there are some issues. Uh, for sure, uh, at first we need a good test because uh, actually now the test coverage is very low. Uh, it's uh, like 30 percent according to coveralls, but it's, it's, it has some glitches, but actually it's really very low. So uh, we need to provide a good test, and in this case the problem is that uh, VT itself doesn't have a 100 percent coverage test, 100 uh, percent coverage test, because uh, and so we have no base to generate equal Lua tests for the given C++ tests. So we have to write it manually, and that's a problem because uh, other code is generated, so it's a huge piece of work. And uh, as I already mentioned, it's an issue of uh, documentation because now it's just a list of classes bound to Lua. And uh, also, for sure, we need to bind uh, more widgets uh, because now it's, it, not, it doesn't provide all the functionality of VT. It's only partial. And uh, for sure, also there are some glitches and bugs. Uh, there are listed in the issues in this link. Uh, and uh, uh, for example, and we have a lot of things to do which are really easy to implement. For example, uh, enums, uh, C enums are just treated as numbers in Lua, which could be simply uh, fixed by using Lua L uh, check option function. So, and, uh, so we could uh, think about it as of string in Lua, not just number. Uh, okay. Uh, finally, uh, there are links to the main repository on GitHub and uh, to my GitHub profile. And uh, I, I think I, I'm not <laughs> running out of time. So does anybody have any questions? Yeah? Why did you use Python to script to generate bindings? Did, did you study the Lua alternatives? I, I think there are many. Uh, well, uh, I, I chose uh, Python because uh, there is a uh, there is a very great thing called PyGCC XML, which is a special Python parser, which is used, uh, which I used to uh, parse C++ code. So, because there is a flexible and good solution in Python, uh, actually, I'm not sure it was the best choice, but yeah, it works, and uh, so that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you.